our next speaker will be uh, a very dear friend of mine, Jeff Sherman. Jeff uh, called me up when the first Cultivating Change Summit was going to happen, and he said, you're coming with me, right? And we booked our tickets, got on a plane, and traveled to Atlanta for what was, um, I think for both of us, a, a life-changing and affirming experience. Since that time, Jeff has been one of the Foundation's strongest supporters. Not only has he donated, um, contributed financially to the success of the Foundation, he helped me co-host uh, an, an event for the Foundation in Portland. He brought OSU and OSU Extension on board as sponsors and donors to the Foundation. I mean, Jeff has been all in for, for the Foundation. Jeff uh, missed the summit last year, but his fear of missing out caused extreme anxiety, and so uh, I don't think Jeff will ever miss another Cultivating Change Summit. Jeff uh, brought with him uh, his fiance, Andrew, this year, and we're thrilled to have uh, Andrew joining the Cultivating Change family as well. Please help me welcome my friend and part of the Cultivating Change family, Jeff Sherman. So I will say that um, I speak for a living, and I have never been so nervous as I am right now. Um, I talk off the cuff, and this is, I am terrified. I've actually, I'm, I'm so honored and excited to be here at this conference and to simply share my story with you. Um, I'm keeping notes in front of me. I've never actually told my story to a group before, and it, it, it is terrifying. But I want, I want to share for a very important reason, actually three. Um, as any good speech has. Um, I, we are losing LGBT youth in rural America at alarming rates. And uh, through my talk, I want everyone here to see that their story has value to someone and you might not even know it. I also want you to know that your story can change organizations. And my third point is that this Cultivating Change Foundation has um, impacted people and impacted me personally. I will say that I haven't loved sharing my story. Uh, for me, it's awkward. I know people have struggled through much, much more than I have, and my story honestly comes from a place of privilege. Uh, there should be a picture that will come up again in a minute, maybe you saw it, but um, this picture that's up there pretty much sums up um, every time I have to answer the question, did you really know you were a gay farmer at five years old? Yes, I did know that I was a gay farmer at five years old, and I really want those striped shorts back. Um, <laughs> while I might not have known I was gay, I did know that I was different, right? We all have talked about that through our stories the, the last couple days. Different was really the only word that we had for it. So I'll come back to the picture in a minute, but um, let me also start by saying that I have an amazing family, an incredible uh, friend network. I have two awesome careers, um, all of which I knew I was going to lose if my secret came out. I knew that that was the end if, if this ever got out. And I don't know how to describe that secret other than this fire that's inside of you, that inside of me, that just continued to get bigger and bigger. The more I tried to pray it away, the bigger it got. Um, I slowly told a few people, and some of those people are in this room today. I didn't know how to talk about it, but once I realized that I had talked about something, then it became anxiety, right? I was no longer the only person that held keys to the secret. Other people had it. The one friend that I was out to in Oregon um, was leaving for Georgia the, um, to get an, uh, a job with the university up there. And um, my business brain kicked in that, looking back, was not rational. But I wrote a coming out business plan. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed JJ speaking today because I was like, I'm not the only one. Uh, like every single story is in here and it had a next step. Um, it started kind of with uh, an executive plan and I call it sort of like leaping out of the closet plan. Um, and shortly after Thanksgiving, um, kind of how this stemmed, um, a friend Colin Kaiser, who's marrying the friend that moved to Georgia, um, he sent me this blog and it was from Robbie Rogers. So I want to read this. He's the really cute soccer player that some of us know. Um, this was what his blog said. This is a piece of it. For the past 25 years, I've been afraid. Afraid to show who I really was because of fear. Fear that judgment and rejection would hold me back from my dreams and aspirations. Fear that my loved ones would be furthest away from me if they knew my secret. 
feared that my secret would get in the way of my dreams. Life is only complete when your loved ones know you, when they know your true feelings, when they know who and how you love. Life is simple when your secret is gone. Gone is the pain that lurks in your stomach at work, the pain from avoiding questions, and at last the pain from hiding such a deep secret. I always thought I could hide this secret. Sound familiar to anyone in the room? I mean, I sat there and I just cried. I was at my desk and I just, I cried. I'm not a crier, I cried. Um, and I knew that I wanted to be the one in charge of the story. So the executive summary was done. Step one, write a letter to myself, just like Robbie Rogers had done, put it in an executive summary. And step two was tell my mom. And I think I left. Uh, my amazing mother, who's up there. Um, but what nobody talks about is once that fire actually starts coming out of you, the secret, the, it's, ter and it's now terror. So the, while we're coming out, um, I've talked to a lot of people in the room today, and it's a similar story. Um, you have this, like you've reasoned with yourself, and, and for me it was irrational, that the people around you are leaving. So you're, you've like come to terms with once you tell them, they're, that, then they're going to, that they're probably going to leave. Um, so Christmas Day 2014 came around, Wheels met the pavement. My mom had me cornered in our large farmhouse kitchen, asking me why I was not dating the really cute photographer girl who was chasing me around, and she saw it all on Facebook. And I just kept telling myself, I'm not going to come out on Christmas Day. I'm not going to come out on Christmas Day. I make it so awkward. Well, she, yeah, she got it out of me, cornered in that kitchen, that I was gay. And she's like, oh. Oh, she thought about it for a minute, and she looked at me. And word for word, she said, don't think you're off the hook for fucking grandkids. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then after that, I would write down each story of me coming out and have a next step of the person that I wanted to tell, the people closest to me. This was my story, and I wanted to be in charge of it. I want to read you the last thing that I wrote in there, which I think is interesting. This was uh, January 25th of 2016. Friday morning, I drove Andrew to the airport for a cruise. The next morning, he called me, it's time for our relationship to be public. This was not a big deal, right? I was out to the people, the business plan had done its thing. The post was a big freaking deal. Many people from college probably had not heard I was gay, and I know many people in the ag world and the extension world were not in the loop. Text messages began rolling in, my Facebook was exploding, Instagram was making noises I had never heard before, <laughs> and Andrew was out of cell phone service. I was absolutely humbled by the support and the love that came from our communities. From then to now, all I can say is that being myself and listening to anyone who wants to talk is what's got me through to now. I've received multiple cards, uh, Facebook messages from rural and ag LGBT folks just saying thank you. Um, one of the quotes was, I in internally accepted I was queer, but never thought that I could be normal in our communities. Just remember that your story matters to someone. We all have a different story, and just telling it matters. This leads me to my last two points. Your story matters to your organizations, too. Don't just make this a personal thing, in my opinion. You'll see that Oregon State University Extension Service and the College of Agricultural Sciences have helped sponsor this conference. This is new. It's not that Oregon State University was anti-gay or homophobic. It was just not something we talked about. As the assistant director for, for Extension, I felt like being honest and authentic at work creates that work-life integration we talk about so much. So when I came out to my colleagues, I was one of two people in the extension service who were out. We have 520 employees, and two of us are out. So the two of us got together, and we said, we're after the cultivating change, we said, we're going to have an LGBT conversation at the OSU Extension Annual Conference. We had 18 people show up, and last week, the extension service officially hired their new chief diversity officer, the first one ever in this position and on the executive team. Your story matters at work. And lastly, this conference right here. These amazing people who put it together, who keep the Facebook groups alive and vibrant, you've changed my life. Sitting in the front row of that first conference, I had no idea what was going to happen. And then two couples were Skyped in to talk about their stories. They talked about going back to their rural communities, working on the family farms and businesses, and my heart sank in my chest again just when I thought I was done, I had this feeling all over again. What if my community actually thought of me as an asset? And then Leon, in his sassy little voice, said, 
oh, please, everyone just wants to be invited to our parties. I was like, huh. And I'm not kidding. I was, for the first time, I was like, shit, I think my hometown is actually going to love this. And they have. Andrew can tell you, we get called out on the street and we get free wine and food, and they <laughs> love it when we're home. But on a more serious note, we still lose rural LGBT youth more than double the rate of their urban peers. Almost one in four LGBT rural kids commits or attempts suicide. Sadly, this doesn't even account for suicides that don't look like the images we have in our heads about suicide. My weapon of choice was a motorcycle, because fuck it. A 2007 Harley Sportster 1200 Custom was actually hard to stay on when I got it above speeds of 90. Now I truly enjoy riding it, but at the time I remember riding too fast, not knowing how to do curves, riding to Sturgis because it sounded fun, and just really not caring about my life. It shakes me to my core to this day to think about those closeted days. The Cultivating Change Conference and the friends I have made through this group have truly changed and likely saved my life. To close, your story matters. Our stories matter. Someone is always listening and looking up to you. Maybe through social media or just being yourself, but tell the story. Thank you to the Cultivating Change Foundation for allowing me to share the story today. Jeff, uh, thank you so much for sharing our story. It's, it's amazing that even someone that you call a close friend, once they start sharing their story, you can continue to learn more and more about them. And, and thanks for being vulnerable and sharing your story with us today.